Welcome back. So we got a new legendary hero. I thought it was going to be a mythic this time around, but I haven't really been keeping up with the actual schedule of what they're going to do. So it feels weird that we're getting a lot more legendaries nowadays than mythics because it just feels like we're really running out of legendary candidates, but I, I could absolutely be wrong on that. But regardless, we got a new legendary in the form of Ninian. I figured she was going to happen sooner or later, just given a lot of the other candidates that we got in the past. But we also got a Ninian all earlier in the year. And given that Soth and Alencia were like really close together by the time this trailer came out, it only made sense that it wasn't going to really be them unless they really wanted to put out a new Soth or Alencia like right off the bat. But regardless, Legendary Ninian, and yeah, I just want to talk about her, go over her usefulness, recommend some skills, builds, and talk about whether or not she's really worth pulling for at the moment or at all, especially since she has to share with two other units. I figured we may as well just talk about it, so that's what we're here to do. And yeah, there's not really much else to say, so we may as well just go right into it. Legendary Ninian is a green cavalry dragon. We've been getting a lot of cavalry dragons as of late. We've got it with Summer Niffled and Ymir and Flame Moosefell and now we have her and it seems like they're going to be trying to saturate it a bit but regardless she is a three move dancer which is really really strong on its own but let's go in order real quick. She has Faithful Breath which is a 19 might weapon that has defense risk faint built into it so as long as she's able to dance she can inflict minus six defense and res on the nearest foes within four spaces and then at the start of combat if her HP is above 40 she gets an additional attack and speed boost by 6 points, and if she initiates combat she gets half no follow up meaning that no matter what, as long as she's able to make the speed check she'll always be able to get 2 attacks out which is really really convenient just for getting damage out in general. But the cream of the crop with this is easily going to be the additional effect that it also comes with in the player phase fire sweep effect where if she initiates combat and has a weapon triangle advantage or if there's a penalty active on the foe, the foe just can't counter attack. And this condition is pretty easy to meet in a lot of scenarios, even taking the weapon triangle advantage aside, because she's able to inflict debuffs from her weapon, she will actually get the condition right off the bat as long as she dances, which is really really convenient. And it does synergize really really well with her PRF dance, as not only is it just a regular dance, but if it's used after turn 1, then it also grants her another action. So she effectively has to change fate, but it's a dance. And I guess this technically makes her the first Gale Force Dragon in the game, which is really cool, actually. She also grants attack and speed 6 to herself visibly, and the isolation, so that way you can't dance again. But I assume if you were to pull some scenario where you just remove the isolation debuff, I think you could do that with Valentine's Alm, then you could dance again. I don't really know how that works per se, but even if that were the case, it seems that it could only trigger once every three turns, as it does later state in the description that if it is used on turn two onward, and the additional effects do go off, it will not trigger again for three turns. So if you were to use this on turn two, then it would make sense that you wouldn't be able to use it again till turn five, but it would still work as a regular dance. You'll still be able to dance, but you won't get the additional benefits of the Gale Force or the visible stats or whatever the case may be. It's only the dance at that point. But then she also comes with Attack Speed Catch, Near Trace, and Blue Feud. Pretty good skills overall, not necessarily Speed Res Near Trace, because the amount of units that can really use it effectively or to its max potential is rather limited, but there is usage for it regardless. But in any case, Legendary Ninian is a really, really solid dancer. And I think she fills that hybrid niche really, really well, because one of the things with bringing a dancer in most scenarios is that you lose out on a combat unit. And given that Ninian does get an additional action after dancing, on top of the fact that she does also have really solid offenses, because we did get the stats in the trailer, I believe it was like 39 base attack with 43 speed, she's also able to act as a combat unit. And this is kind of similar to how a lot of people used to run Gale Force Dancers with the likes of Curtin Zazura, or maybe Ninja Katana Olivia, but this is easily just an upgrade over that because she just has an actual attack set to work with, and I would say the closest comparison to her would actually be Brave Mary because they both do similar things where they would attack and then also refresh an ally at the same time. But in my opinion, Legendary Ninian is just a step above that because she can dance first instead of having to act in combat, meaning that it's pretty much guaranteed that she's going to be able to refresh an ally while also being able to attack afterward, which is really convenient. While with Marianne, you do have to attack and charge the special, and it does work within two spaces, which is really convenient just for refreshing any ally within the proximity. The only issue 
issue at that point just becomes the gravity, but you could always work around it. But regardless, I find that this is just going to be a lot more consistent and a lot more manageable for so many players. And in my opinion, she may end up being one of the strongest Aetherade's offense units that we have in the game, solely because of her hybrid nature being really, really, really good. But yeah, there's a lot to go over when it comes to just her overall positives and her negatives. As I already mentioned, she does have innate half null follow-up and fire sweep. So in terms of just dealing damage, she's actually one of the safer units in the game because most units don't tend to run null C disrupt or have any sort of null C disrupt effect at one range. The closest thing we have is Ascended Fiorum, but that only works at two range. So more often than not, she's going to be able to get the fire sweep effect going because as long as the foe is debuffed and they initiate combat, she's always going to get fire sweep. So even if she somehow misses a speed check, she'll still be able to get it going. And again, the Gale Force Dance effect is really, really strong just for the hybrid nature of not only being able to support, but also being able to do combat because it just doesn't leave your dancers prone to doing nothing at the end. And although her bulk isn't exactly the best, she could always run away to safety if she were to attack and then use near trace. And that also ties into the fact that she's also a cavalry unit, so she can actually use hit and run strategies as well as just making good use of her three movement in general, which is really, really nice. And outside of that, she's just a really solid scoring unit because that's what every legendary does nowadays. But because she also has a PRF dance, she isn't penalized in score. And if you were to give her a 300 SP B slot, and then maybe Aether or something for her special, she'll then be able to score really, really, really high. And then outside of that, she just has really good offenses, so she may end up doing a lot more damage than you may think otherwise, because she does get a lot of attack and speed from just her kit alone. However, because her weapon does heavily rely on the penalties on the foe, any sort of near save armor could easily just mitigate the fire sweep effect, and you could always work around it by having stuff like sabotage support or chills, or whatever the case may be. So if you can't get the penalty off on a specific foe because they're being protected by a near save, then you can still work around it. But if they have penalty neutralization, then that just becomes a different issue. Because at that point, Ninian really isn't going to be able to get around that unless there is another sort of penalty effect that isn't through just stats. So what if it's maybe like gravity or skull, then you can still work around it. But if there is any sort of condition or effect that basically neutralizes any sort of penalty the foe may have, then it's not really going to work. And outside of that, she can be really good for Aetherade's defense as long as you can avoid the isolation effect. Because with pretty much every single dancer, if you can't dance, then she's not really going to be doing much in terms of the Aetherade's defense context. However, she is still a relatively decent combat unit, so I wouldn't really write it off all the way. Just keep in mind that if you are going to use her on Aetherade's defense, that, that is something you're going to have to watch out for. And to be honest, for the most part, I really do think she's just a really, really, really solid unit. And that if you do want to get her or you're on the fence about whether or not you should summon for her, honestly, she's going to be really useful for quite a long time. I can't really see her falling out too much. Because even at the end of the day, she's still a three-move dancer, which is really, really convenient. And if you were to go and pull her, there are some recommended skills and builds that you can actually just use on her. Because surprisingly, there's quite a lot of flexibility within her kit. I color-coded a lot of stuff on the list, so it's basically to highlight their synergy with each other. So for example, if you have Moonbow and Glimmer as your special, maybe you'll want Heavy Blade so she could always get a two cooldown special going immediately, because otherwise she won't be able to get a special off consistently without maybe any sort of like World Breaker support or New Year Valoria or whatever the case may be, because she doesn't have slang in her weapon. So in those instances, I find that actually color coding it may actually help instead of just giving a bunch of builds right off the bat because it could just be like all over the place too if you're just looking for specific things. This is just going to be a general idea of what you can give her and what skills you want to pair with it. Now in terms of weaponry, you don't really want to replace her PRF because it's arguably going to be the thing that just ties everything together. There's nothing else she really wants because she doesn't have access to flows because she's a dragon. She loses on the fire sweep effect and inheritable breaths aren't really that good offensively. And the best we really have in terms of breaths are I think is a lantern breath and that's heavily, heavily enemy phase oriented. And as you can see through her satellite, she's not really the best when it comes to general bulk, but even with that being the case, don't get rid of her breath. It's really, really good for her. Outside of that, you could give her any sort of damaging special with Moonbow, Glimmer, and then Heavy Blade, as I mentioned earlier. You could also give her a defensive special that she could just charge while attacking through Fire Sweep, so if she does have to take a hit in the enemy phase, 
she can potentially survive, which is really convenient. You could also do a miracle set if you want to be more cautious about her bulk, because there's a good chance that she could still get pierced through 30%, even at one range, because 23 defense isn't a lot, and units just hit way too hard nowadays, and I fear that maybe it won't do too much, but you can still use it to a fair degree. But if you do want to be super, super careful, you can always give her Miracle with Heavy Blade and Quicken Pulse, so that way she could charge Miracle as long as A, she is able to meet a Heavy Blade check, but you would want to run stuff like Attack Res, Near Trace, or Low Attack Speed, so that way she could just make Heavy Blade checks a lot easier because unfortunately she can't get access to Flashing Blade, and B, if there aren't any Guard Effects because Guard Effects will generally mess up her ability to charge up Miracle, and Guard Effects tend to be heavily enemy phase oriented with the likes of Crafty Fighter, Stance Skills, you name it, so you do have to be careful in that regard. But also, it would be worth noting that pairing it up with Attack Smoke 4 is also going to be really, really important, because even though she has a high speed stat, she doesn't have any ability to prevent any sort of guaranteed follow-up from the foe. So if you were to run Attack Smoke 4, then she could charge it, she could get the additional effect after in the Shading Combat, and then she could take a hit if she really needs to in the enemy phase, which is going to be really, really convenient. You could also give her double life and death if the idea is just to soak Bright Shrines, because she does have a really decent offensive stat line. If you need somebody to soak it, she's probably going to be one of the better options because of the fact that she could just remove her penalties after using a dance. Because it is basically just to change fate, but dance. Outside of that, you could always just give her other miscellaneous skills. Aether with Chill Defense Res, so that way she could just score really well in Arena. Attack Speed Catch or Clash, just for general stat boost or just damage output in general. Surge Sparrow, if you want to keep her sustainability high. Wings of Mercy for pretty much any standard dancer, but you do lose out on Trace, meaning that you can't run away afterward, but... Wings of Mercy is a lot more flexible in positioning. Infantry Speed Tactic if you want to provide even more support to infantry allies. And yeah, you can just give her a bunch of miscellaneous smoke. Speed Smoke for damage reduction. Pulse Smoke for shutting down specials. And Fatal Smoke for Aether Aid's defense. So that way you can actually just prevent any sort of healing. Which she'll be able to do because most foes at one range aren't really going to be running any sort of null counter skill. Which is really convenient. You could also give her Savage Blow for her Sacred Seal. And you could potentially pair it up with a C slot. But... I find that you kind of need the C-slot for a bit more stuff, especially depending on the set, but regardless, there is a lot you can do with her. And if you don't want to use her as a unit, but rather just as a fodder manual, or whatever the case may be, there are things you can do with her skills. Attack Speed Catch is pretty standard when it comes to just overall boosting of attack and speed. You can pretty much just give this to any sort of high attack and speed cavalry or flying unit, and they'll do pretty well with it, because it can grant up to 9 attack and speed, which is really convenient. As far as speed res near trace goes, it is very very niche in its usage, but you could still use it for general stat swings, because dragons don't really have a lot to work with, and I really wouldn't give this to any sort of cav, because they all generally prioritize the defense stat outside of Petrine, who can target the res stat to be fair, but more often than not, you probably want to run a flow in there, but regardless, it can still be used for general stat swings, because it does debuff the foe for 3 res and speed, so it's not the worst there if you do want to use it, especially since you can get catch and near trace at the same time or even catch and blue feud because we do have a demo attack speed catch not readily available but it is a four star thing you can get through the new year banner but if you don't have any of the copies then maybe your best bet is just to grab blue feud instead because there's so many skills in the game that can just boost attack and speed regardless and blue feud can actually be really really useful it's probably going to be one of the best feud skills that we have right now because of the ever-growing populace of Brave Hectors and Ascending Lead Dunes. And if you could shut down any sort of support that they would be receiving otherwise through Blue Feud, then they'll be a lot easier to deal with. But generally, you want to give it to any sort of like green nuke like Ninja Core and Pirate Hanoka, New Year Dagger, any unit that could already have a favorable matchup against them, this will just make it a lot easier. And that's really it when it comes to Ninian. The only other thing worth talking about is her color share, because she does share with Legendary Male Byleth and Legendary Xander. And to be honest, it's not really the worst share in my opinion. If you are looking for fodder, it's not really the greatest, but if you are looking for a solid Legendary unit for Water Season, you have a two-thirds chance to get one because Legendary Male Byleth does cover the water season, but Legendary Xander does 
cover fire, but you do have to keep in mind that if you don't really want them, you could always wait a few months for what's potentially going to be a, maybe a worse color share or even a better color share, depending on what you really need or value. But regardless, if you are looking for a legendary unit for arena purposes, this isn't a bad share whatsoever. Byleth is just a really good nuke in general because of Sublime Heaven just piercing through any sort of damage reduction skills which is really, really, really convenient. That on top of the fact that they have a no follow drive, which can also be used supportively, but also on themselves is really convenient. And then with Legendary Xander, he came out at a really poor time because we had so many Axe Cavs that were pretty much competing for his role. But in terms of a offensive and sustainable unit, he is one of the better ones that we have because he could get damage out really, really easily thanks to his PRF, not only having slang, but it does have the special cooldown per hit effect which is really really convenient just for damage output but then also defensively he has chivalry which does provide damage reduction based on the foe's current health and that could be up to 50 percent if the foe's at max hp but then it also has the canto trace effect so he could always run away after and to be honest legendary xander is a really really solid unit and if you are concerned about whether or not any of these units are worth going for to be honest, I would say they're all pretty good in their own right. I would still say Ninian's probably the best one here, but if you had to get a Byleth or a Xander along the way, it's not really the worst in that regard. But if you don't want them, you could always fodder them. There's options for that too. So if you do want to fodder Legendary Male Byleth, you can actually grab Attack Defense Ideal and Times Pulse because we do have a Demo Attack Defense Ideal in the normal 3 and 4 star pool via Skahawk which is really convenient just for getting a bunch of skills. And if you were to do that, you can actually just use it for Gale Force purposes or even enemy phase purposes. Attack Defense Ideal with Times Post and Heavy Blade, you can give this to any sort of unit with a guaranteed follow-up, as well as no follow-up so that way they could just secure their own doubles more often than not, and then secure Gale Force triggers relatively easily. But you could still use it for enemy phase purposes, whether you want to use it as a melee specialist for Attack Defense Ideal, or you want to use Times Pulse in tandem with the likes of Vital Astra, so that way you could just act as a enemy phase tank, which is pretty convenient in that regard. Times Pulse is still a generally decent skill, but it is also on a lot of units. So if you don't want that, you could always grab a low attack res, which I don't think is really worth grabbing in my opinion. You can still grab ideal and law at the same time, but those aren't really too synergetic with each other on most units. But so you could always grab low attack res and put it on any sort of unit that would appreciate it for heavy blade checks. So if you were to give it to a Reinhardt, for example, and run heavy blade, he could more consistently get two cooldown specials going on every second hit, which is really, really nice. And in terms of legendary Xander fodder, he also follows a similar pattern to legendary Ninian. Attack speed catch, you could still give to any sort of high attack speed unit. Doesn't really matter who as long as they can make the most use of it. But I do think C Feud is going to be the best skill to grab off here, especially if you can only grab one. You can still grab both if you have attack speed catch three readily available, but if you can't, I highly recommend just grabbing C Feud instead for any nuke in particular, because with C Feud in your kit, you're going to be able to shut down stuff like Flame and Elemine that provides damage reduction properties, which means damage output in general is going to be so much more convenient. And in my honest opinion, I do think that if you did have to grab one or the other, Seafood is easily the way to go. And that's really it when it comes to the fodder options. But overall, there's still plenty of value to every single skill in this color share. And beyond that, there's really not much else to say. If you are looking for a really solid dancer, as well as a combat unit, Ninian's probably going to be one of your best hybrid units probably currently in the game. She's really, really strong offensively and supportively. But if you end up pulling on it, and you do also end up getting a Legendary Byleth or a Xander along the way, then you could always consider foddering them off if you don't want to keep them for specific sets or just for specific usage in general. But in my opinion, Ninian is probably worth grabbing eventually. It doesn't have to be right now especially if you don't like the color share. But I do recommend sometime in the future just grabbing her because honestly, she's going to be a really, really strong unit, not only for Aether Aid's purposes, but PvE, Arena, and there's probably going to be a lot of good usage for her in Summoner Duels if anyone's interested in that. But yeah, Legendary Ninian is a fantastic unit and I really couldn't recommend her enough. But in any case, You'll have to let me know what you're going to be doing down below because I am curious on whether or not you're going to be pulling on this banner. There are a good amount of things on this banner not really worth pulling, but I don't think green's actually too bad in a lot of aspects. So just let me know if you're going to be pulling for Ninian. Do you want to keep her? Do you want to fodder her? Just let me know what your thoughts are down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later.